Today I'm going to show you how to make a piece of Victorian hair jewelry. Hair jewelry was worn a lot in the Victorian period for many different reasons, but today it's mostly known for being used as mourning jewelry. It usually would feature a lock of hair from the deceased and would on the back sometimes show a picture of a tomb or a grieving woman or some other symbol of death to help you remember that person who's deceased. And now, that it's officially spooky season, I'm going to show you how to make one. So these are the things you're going to need to make your Victorian hair jewelry. First things first, you're going to need some wax paper to protect your table. You'll need some masking tape, some glue. I use Elmer's and super glue. You could make two with just Elmer's. The super glue just helps cut down on some of the drying time. You'll need some scissors. You'll need some stiff paper. This is a scrap off of some watercolor paper. Anything like a, a cardstock or something a little thicker will work. You'll need something to put your hair piece into. I bought this locket at Joann's for about $10. They're designed for floating charms. So that means that it has glass on both sides of the locket and it's got some good depth to it. So there's enough room to put some hair in there. And you can also put something on the other side and have a two-sided jewelry piece, which I think is pretty cool. You also want either some paint or a printer. And last but not least, you'll need some hair. This is my own, I did an at-home quarantine haircut. Um, I find it helpful to put a rubber band on one end before you cut the hair and that will help keep everything in one piece. You don't need to cut quite this much, any smaller amount, like this much would be enough to make two or three pieces with. You don't need very much. Um, right, let's get started. Okay, so I've taken a small chunk out of my piece of hair and I think this should be more than enough to make our woven locket. The first thing I'm going to do is to make it easier to weave all of our pieces of hair together. We're going to make each little bundle stick together with a little bit of glue. So what I'm going to do is separate out a small section and you can get a little bit creative here the smaller each individual piece of your weave is the more intricate of a weave you'll get if you do larger pieces you won't need as many to weave and it'll be a much wider piece to weave anyway um so i'm going to do a line of glue kind of spread it out a little I'm going to set the hair right on top and this will make one little bundle for weaving later and it's okay if your piece is quite long we can trim it down later it's just helpful to get everything nice and stuck down together. You'll notice I've got little bits of hair kind of going all over the place. Um, don't really worry about it right now. Before we're finished, we're going to clean everything up and trim off any little flyaways. You will get hair all over your workspace, so you just want to make sure you sweep when you're done.
So while we wait for the glue to dry on the, our little hair bundles, I'm going to work on the artwork for the back side of my locket. So I've taken it out of my package and I'm just gonna cut myself a little circle that I think should be about the right size to fit in my locket. I'm sure there's a more exact science for this, but I'm a trace and go for it, so. This is what we're going to be attaching our hairpiece to to help it stay all together nicely and go into the locket. So you want it to be about the right size to fit just inside. So that's a little bit off. I'm gonna try that again. Cut mine a little bit too small. Let's give this a try. Almost there. Now, if you would like to decorate the back of your locket, you can either print yourself a picture that you will glue onto the back of this, or if you want to be a little extra fancy, you can trace yourself an extra piece off of your stiff paper and paint your own little painting for the back. A lot of morning jewelry did have a reversible feature where one side showed the hair and the other showed a portrait of the person whose hair it was or a morning scene. I'm going to more or less copy a morning scene from a real piece of hair jewelry for mine, but you are also totally welcome to Print a copy and just stick it on the back. Nothing wrong with that. And I'm just gonna get to it. If your glue is having trouble drying on the wax paper, 
You can peel your bundles off after the glue has partially dried and flip them over to allow the glue to finish drying. Okay, my glue is dry and I've trimmed the worst of the frizzies. So now I'm going to start with my weaving. My locket is about this big and my hair pieces are much longer than that. So I think I'm going to cut all of them in half so that I'll get a woven piece closer to the size that I need for this. Alright, so now to start my weave, I'm going to set up one side with about half my hair pieces. You don't have to put them quite exactly next to each other, but you want them pretty close. And once you've got them all good and lined up together, I'm going to make them a little more snug. I'm going to put a piece of masking tape over the top just to hold everything in place. And then we'll start weaving. So it's over, under, over, under. Same way you do on top of a pie or something. And this is why you glue your sections together first, because otherwise weaving is just hopeless. Okay, so that's our first piece in. Now the next one I weave opposite, so I go over first, then under, and pull that up nice and snug. I've got this one upside down, I think. Right. So now just continue doing this with the rest of your hair pieces. Alright, so last step for weaving is to just tighten everything up, so just kind of try to smush everything in together so that you don't have any big gaps, because we don't want that. And then, before you tape and glue everything down, check that you've got a piece big enough for your jewelry. I do. So I'm going to go ahead and tape down the rest of my edges to keep everything in place.
All right, make sure it's really stuck on there because we're gonna take this off of the wax paper and flip it over to the other side. Because the other side already has glue on it. And this is our nice side. So then, to make sure that our nice little weave stays together, we're gonna put some glue on the back just to make sure the whole thing stays together in one piece. don't need a very thick layer, just enough to keep everything all connected and stuff. And then leave that to dry. Okay, so our glue is dry, and we've got this little weave bit. So your next step is to cut out a circle a little bit larger than the paper you cut out to go into your piece of jewelry. And if there's any spot that looks particularly nicer, like I've got a little bit of glue that leaked through over here, so I think I'm going to cut my circle out over on this side. Next, you want to super glue your hairpiece to the middle of your circle. Okay, it looks like my super glue is glued shut. So we're gonna use Elmer's, which is also totally fine. So put a little dab of glue on your paper. You don't need a ton of glue, just enough to help it stick. And stick your little hair circle right on there. And if you need, you can put a heavy weight on this to make sure that it all stays flat as it dries. Alright, my glue is dry, so I'm just going to trim away all of this extra now that I have it glued on. Try to get any of those little stray bits that want to escape off the ends. And if you need to dab a little glue to keep something together, now is a good time for that. You also want to go in with a nice sharp pair of scissors and get all of the little frizzies sticking off the top. Hopefully you don't have too many, but if you do, it's not a problem. can try to keep all your little hair bits on your wax paper and it will make cleanup a lot easier. Alright. So now you want to decide which direction you want your weave to go. If you want it to go straight up and down or if you want it to go a little diagonal. I think I'm going to leave mine straight up and down and now I'm going to take my little picture that you've either painted or printed out. 
and we're just gonna glue it on the back side of the piece that has your hair on it. So you want to be careful to make sure you keep it lined up how you want it. Dab a little glue on there. Now before your glue dries, you'll want to check that it's definitely facing the right direction. Because you can tweak it a little before everything dries, not after. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to leave this to dry a while. And then we'll be able to put it in the jewelry. All right, this is the big moment. Now hopefully if you've got this trimmed just about right, mine's a little large, but once you get this trimmed exactly right, you should be able to just pop this right into your locket. Gently push it down and hopefully it's snug enough that you won't need to glue anything. You can kind of Smush it around a little if you need to straighten it out. Check for any last loose hair bits. And we're all done. We've got a beautiful piece of hair work on one side. And our little morning painting on the other. Now you can wear this threaded on a ribbon or thread it with some beads. If you want you can glue it shut just to make sure that it can't fall out or anything but this has a pretty strong magnet on it so I'm not too worried about it. And you've made your first piece of Victorian hair jewelry. Now you get to enjoy your beautiful new piece, great for wearing for Halloween or with your reproduction Victorian costumes. Give it to a friend who likes something spooky. If you found this helpful, please let me know. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you for watching.